we are asked to evaluate the integral and the method that we will use is trigonometric substitution. It's worth exploring how we know this would be trigonometric substitution. One of the first clues is that there's a square root present in the expression, but then another clue is that we can rewrite the quantity under the square root as x squared plus two squared. Very often these problems involve a perfect square. So you're gonna to wanna to take whatever perfect square you have in your problem and rewrite it in terms of a constant squared like we've done here. So then after doing that, you would look at your expressions in the left-hand column and try to find the one that matches the one in your problem. So in our case, we have a constant squared plus x squared underneath the square root, and that's exactly what this expression is right here. We have the square root of a constant squared plus a variable squared. Notice that our constant in this case is two. So in other words, a is equal to two. Might be worth writing that down. So once you've identified which of the three expressions is the correct one, you wanna move on to your main first step, and that is going to be to make the following substitution. So we're going to, in step one, let our variable x equal our a, which was two, times the tangent of theta. The next thing you do is you differentiate that with respect to theta. So you would have dx equals, now we have to remember what the derivative of tangent theta is, and the derivative of tangent of theta is secant squared of theta, and then you'll have a d theta right there. Your third step is to take your original problem and to start making substitutions with it. So why don't we copy our original integral and we'll bring it down here and then we're going to make a couple of strategic substitutions. So, so let's check out what we mean by that. If you look at the numerator, you have a dx in the numerator and we've decided that dx can be rewritten as two secant squared of theta d theta. And then you have a division, you have your square root now you have your variable squared. Remember, we let x equal two tan theta. So if you take that equation, x equals two tan theta, and you square both sides of it, you would have x squared, and then you'd have to square this side. Notice when you square that side, you have to square the two. So that becomes four, and then the tangent of theta becomes tangent squared of theta. So now we can see that x squared can be substituted with four tangent squared of theta, like so. Plus, and then you have two squared, you can go right back and just write that out as four, that's fine. The next step is to kind of simplify, and oftentimes this involves a series of simplifications. The first thing we might notice is that we can factor out a four in the denominator, although that four will still be underneath the square root, so it'll be four times tangent squared of theta plus one. The numerator remains the same. Then what happens in these problems is once you factor out your constant, in this case four, you're gonna be left with an expression inside the parentheses that will be substituted with an identity. And we go back to our table and we can see that one plus tangent squared theta is equivalent to secant squared of theta. So this, one plus tan squared of theta right here will be substituted with the secant squared of theta. So you're gonna have the square root of four secant squared of theta in the denominator there. Now, of course, what's underneath the square root, this expression is fortunately a perfect square. So what you do is you square root your constant. So you take the square root of four and you get two, and then you square root the secant squared, and whenever you square root a square, they cancel each other out and you're left with just secant of theta. Up top, you still have your two secant squared of theta, d theta. Well, this is looking very nice because these twos would cancel, and then a factor of secant cancels. You have one factor in the denominator and a pair of factors in the numerator. Go ahead and cancel one of those out on each side, and you are left with simply the integral of secant of theta d theta. Now the integral of sec theta d theta can be evaluated using some other techniques, but most likely your professor expects you from either a table that he or she provides or just from your memory somehow that you know the integral of sec theta. And 
I've referenced a source here that tells me that the integral of secant of u is equal to this expression right here. The same would apply if our variable was theta. So we're going to follow this expression and we're going to see that the integral of sec theta is the natural log of the absolute value of the secant of theta plus the tangent of theta and then plus c as our constant of integration. Now we're not done with the problem yet because if you go all the way back to it, the original variable in the problem was x, not theta. So we cannot leave our answer in terms of theta. We have to re revert it back to being in terms of theta. And to do that, we recall that we had let x equal 2 tan of theta. And what you're going to need to do here to get th uh, theta back in terms of x is to draw a right triangle. You probably have seen your professor do this. Now to draw the right triangle, you first need to divide both sides by the constant. So if you do that, you will see that tangent of theta is equal to x over 2. We recall that tangent is the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side of a right triangle. So what you do is you draw a right triangle. You can put theta down here. Your opposite side, opposite to theta, would be x, and then your adjacent side would be 2. You're then going to need to find the hypotenuse. So why don't we just call that c? We know that c squared is equal to x squared plus 2 squared. 2 squared is just 4. Square root both sides, and you would find that the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of x squared plus 4. So we'll mark that hypotenuse accordingly. It's the square root of x squared plus 4. And then finally, you take your integral and you just replace those trig expressions with expressions in terms of x based on your little right triangle. That probably sounded confusing, so let's clarify. Let's bring this sucker down here. Now, as far as secant of theta is concerned, remember secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so this would be hypotenuse over adjacent. If you look back at your right triangle, the hypotenuse was the square root of x squared plus 4, and the adjacent side was just 2. So you're going to replace secant of theta with this expression right here. And then similarly, the tangent of theta, well, that's just opposite over adjacent, so that would be x over 2. So this right here will be your x over 2. So putting this all together, we're going to have as our final answer the natural log of the absolute value of the square root of x squared plus 4 all over 2 plus our tan theta, which was x over 2. And that would complete the integral.